Hello and welcome back to Lutheran FAQ. I'm Pastor Emily Edenfield, Assistant to the Bishop in the South Carolina Synod of the ELCA. Today's question is, what is Christmas about? Christmas is the second most important day in the Christian calendar, after Easter. When Jesus Christ is raised from the dead on Easter morning, God accomplishes life and salvation for all of us. But that can't happen until after Jesus is born, on Christmas morning. Christmas is such a big deal because God becomes human. God, the creator of the universe, all-knowing and all-powerful, decides that the best way to be in relationship with us is to be born as a baby, one of the most vulnerable creatures on the planet. That's what Christmas is about. God couches this great good news in a story that makes for sweet Christmas pageants and fun live nativity scenes. It's easy to tell children and adults the story of a sweet baby appearing in tough circumstances, ready to save the world, much easier than telling the story of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection from the dead. There are animals, shepherds, a romance of a sort, travelers bringing expensive gifts, all kinds of fun props and charming farm scenes. And then the world picked up on the sweetness and joy of the holiday. We added lights to what in the Northern Hemisphere is a darker time of year. We give gifts like the wise men bring to baby Jesus. Everyone likes gifts and the stores love the opportunity to sell us gifts and decorations and party clothes and food and everything else. Christmas ballooned up into a huge celebration where Jesus has to compete for attention with Santa Claus. We don't have time in a video like this to get into the history of every Christmas tradition, but we can hit some of the highlights. First, you might hear Christmas referred to as the Festival of the Incarnation. That's the holiday's official name in churchy terms, but when it's at home, it goes by Christmas. Incarnation is what we call it when God takes on a human form. You've heard of chili con carne, chili with meat? Professor and pastor David Loos calls the incarnation God con carne, God in flesh. There is, of course, a lot of theology that goes with this, but here's what you need to know. Jesus Christ is 100% Son of God, made flesh by the Holy Spirit, and 100% Son of Humanity, born of Mary. It's not 50-50, it's 100-100. The math doesn't work, but the salvation does, so we just have to go with it. The Incarnation isn't God dressing up like a human or pretending to be one of us. The Incarnation is God really becoming fully like we are, with all of our limitations and our sorrows and our struggles, as well as our joys and our physical sensations. Yes, Christmas does have 12 days, just like the song says. The church's season of Christmas starts on December 25th and goes till Epiphany on January 6th. A lot of secular, meaning outside the church, celebration of Christmas runs before the day itself and comes to a crashing halt on December 26th. In the church, we have the season of Advent leading up to Christmas, and then the 12 days of Christmas itself. On those Sundays of Christmas, we might have a festive worship, including hymn sings. It's a holy time. Whether or not your true love brings you partridges or pear trees may vary. You might also notice that many congregations have worship on Christmas Eve, even more than have worship on Christmas Day itself. In the Old Testament and the early church, days were thought to start in the evening rather than at midnight or in the morning. So if a Sabbath was on a Saturday, it started Friday night at sunset and ended Saturday night at sunset. Many early church holidays followed this pattern. We still have Christmas Eve services on the night before Christmas, Easter vigils the night before Easter, and Saturday night services ahead of Sundays at some congregations. Don't worry, your congregation isn't skipping Christmas or moving it to suit the schedule. This is the way that it has been for a very long time. Some congregations have Christmas Day services as well, and others don't. The Christmas Eve service counts as the Christmas celebration. Both are fine traditions. Now, we need to have a word about Santa. Santa Claus is a way of retelling the story of St. Nicholas, who was a bishop in what is now Turkey. He lived from the years 270 to 343, and he has a lot of really great stories. The authors Demi, Anne Tompert, and Nicholas Grun have excellent children's books, 
about how St. Nicholas helped the poor by tossing gifts into their stockings while they dried by the fire, how he saved his town from starving to death during a famine, and maybe even how he brought some boys back to life. Nicholas was credited with miracles while he was alive and after his death. Some of the stories about Nicholas are more appropriate for grown-ups than children, and I'm just going to have to suggest you look them up. Yes, Santa Claus is real. And yes, Santa is a saint because he points us to Jesus. Like many other Christians, his public image may not show the depth of his faith. The stories are all there, though, for us to know and to share so that Nicholas's witness lives on. As the body of Christ, we have less definite thoughts on Rudolph and the other reindeer. But Santa? Santa we're sure about. You've probably heard that some of the Christmas rituals we know and love, like the date, December 25th, or the burning of Yule logs, come from pagan roots or have been adapted from non-Christian customs. You can do some research if that's interesting for you. For myself, I focus more on what helps me with my faith or adds another layer of meaning, even if that's not how the tradition started. We are always interpreting and reinterpreting how we express our relationship with God. Though the rumor is that Martin Luther popularized the Christmas tree, and I think Lutherans should totally take credit for that. Some Christmases come with all kinds of festivity and Hallmark movie-style perfection. Some come with mess and grief and sparks of joy in between. Wherever you find yourself this year, remember that God has come to be with us in all of our lives, in the good, the bad, and the in-between. God loves you. The first Christmas was in a stable, after all, with all the messiness of birth and no time to clean before visitors showed up. Your holiday will have room for Jesus to appear in unlikely places, too. Every Christmas has new traditions to mix with the old and new questions to add to the conversation. Thanks for letting me be part of your discussion. If you'd like to dig a little deeper, there's a study guide in the description of this video. And I hope to hear back from you. I invite you to submit your questions to me so that I can consider them for a future Lutheran FAQ video. You can also like this and subscribe so that you don't miss future conversation starters. God is always helping us in our questions and in our study to grow in our faith and our life together. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas.